Well, I was dating a guy at this time who was a big believer in intelligent design. Intelligent design is this idea that the world is so complex, especially the conscious, thinking, feeling human being who is so complicated that it just couldn't have happened by chance. Someone or something had to have a hand in creating us, and that someone or something is God. I mean, the watch requires a watchmaker. Well, one morning, my intelligent designer boyfriend and I were waking up, and he glanced at the books on my side of the bed, which were becoming increasingly more biological rather than religious. And then we gazed into each other's eyes, deeper than ever before. <gasps> it's the human eye, you know, he said. That's the proof there must have been a designer. You can't have half an eye. Half an eye is no good at all. Either you have an eye so you can see, or you don't. How could you possibly evolve an eye? Yes, I said. That's probably true. The eye. The eye is very complex. After all, it's the window into the soul. <laughs> so I began to read about eyes. <laughs> about eyes. <laughs> Turns out from an evolutionary perspective, the human eye is perfectly explainable. What began as a patch of skin, more sensitive to light than other skin, offers some advantage. Those that have it live, those that don't do not. Turns out half an eye actually is pretty valuable. About half is valuable. <laughs> now, if an intelligent designer or God designed our eyes, he would not get such a very good grade because he put the blood vessels and nerves that carry all the visual information to the brain on top of the retina. Imagine, that's like putting all the wiring of a video camera on top of the lens. And, and where the blood vessels and nerves go through our retina into our brain, it causes us to have this blind spot that we all compensate for by basically hallucinating, <laughs> which is bad, 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 not a good design for an eye. And it doesn't even have to be that way. Octopus and squid, they evolve their eyes separately from us, and they don't have those annoying features. The wonderful biologist, Massimo Piliucci, he wrote, the only possible conclusions that we can come to from this evidence are that God didn't design the eye, or he did, and he's pretty sloppy and not worthy of our unconditional admiration, or God likes squids a lot better than humans. <laughs> Intelligent design gets everything backwards. It's like saying that our hands are miraculous because they fit so perfectly into our gloves. <laughs> Look at that, four fingers and a thumb. Now that can't have been an accident. My old cat, Rita, lumbered onto my lap while I was reading about eyes. She was about 15 years old then and had gotten too tired and bothered to go through the entire meow. She just started going, meh. <laughs> we looked each other in the eye. Instead of noticing the differences, I noticed the similarities. We inherited our eyes from our common ancestor who probably lived around 100 million years ago. Our eyes are forward on our skull because we are hunters. Except, well, Rita wasn't much of a hunter. And I realized neither was I. Not if I was dating a guy who was so into intelligent design. Rita meowed at me like, ah, who needs to hunt when I have domestic help? <laughs> then I started reading about all of these experiments on the function of the temporal lobes. These doctors